Good morning Year 4. It's Tuesday the 19th of January and this is today's starter. Make sure you hit pause to have a go at these questions and we'll be moving on to the answers in 5, 4, 3, 2 and 1. Pause on this screen to mark your answers. Remember give yourself a tick if you've got it and a dot if not. I'm especially interested in what you said for your recap over here. How many of you knew the difference between a 2D shape and a 3D shape? And we're moving on to our lesson in three, two, one. There we are. So today we are looking at what area is. And this links to everything we were doing last week about perimeter. Can you remember what perimeter means? I'd hope so. And even if you can't, you've got it down here in our little yellow warm up box. We know that perimeter is the distance outside a shape, like the fence around a farm or the walls on the outside of a room. And to find the perimeter, we measure all the sides of a shape and add them up. So do we have any idea what area is? So here's my shape. And I can see the perimeter, the outside of the shape, but what's the area? Ah, area is the space inside of a shape. So perimeter is the outside and area is the space on the inside. Area is the amount of space inside a 2D shape. Here are some different shapes. I wonder if you can imagine what their area is going to look like. Let's have a look together. So for the triangle, we can see there's the space inside of it. For this shape, here's the space inside of that. But what about this last one? Could I fill this shape up? No, I couldn't because there's a gap. It's only a 2D shape if all the lines are connected. If there's a gap, it's just a line and that doesn't have any area. Area is the space inside a closed shape. Okay. I'm going to move over now to my flip chart. It's been a little while since we used one of these. And here's why area is important. So I have this lovely picture here of three horses in a field. Very beautiful. I'll hang it on my wall when I get home. But I want to know how much area there is. How big is the surface of this picture? Because I need to put glass over the top of it, probably. I've got some shapes here that might help me to measure it. Let's see if we can measure it using the triangles first. Okay, I'm fitting them on. Oh, this one doesn't quite reach. Oh, and I'm getting lots of gaps. It's not fitting quite right. Okay, so measuring in triangles wasn't really a good idea. Let's try something else. Circles. Mm, I'm still getting lots of gaps, so not circles either. Let's give the squares a shot. Oh, the squares are fitting much nicer together. It reminds me of the squares in our maths books at school, our grids. Let's see. That fits much nicer. I have far less gaps. So when we're measuring area, it's really useful to use squares to do it. Whether that's putting the squares in ourselves, so long as they're all the same size, or using squares on a piece of math paper. So here you can see the same picture but split into these square tiles. So we can say that the area of this picture is eight squares, eight square tiles, okay? If these tiles, if we knew what size they were, so for example, if they were a centimetre big, we could say this, uh, this has an area of eight centimetres. If they were metres, we would say eight metres and so on. Okay, let's go back to our PowerPoint. So here are some different shapes made up of yellow squares. And so far, all of them are made up of four yellow squares, but all of the shapes are really different. And just by moving the squares around, I can change the shape. But all of them are still made of four squares. So let's see, I can move them anywhere. I can make all sorts of strange shapes, but all of them have the same area, the same distance inside. They are all four squares big. The area is four squares. Oop, my PowerPoint is frozen. There we are. Here are three more shapes. These children are trying to measure the area inside and this young lady has gone first. She's taken her square, she's put them inside. Not looking too great, there's lots of gaps there. She thinks the area is 12 squares. 
Now this boy's going to go next. Okay, he's looking pretty good so far. Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? He's using squares of different shapes and he thinks the area is 11 squares. Now this last girl, she's going to use squares all the same shape. Once she's counted them up, she says that the area is 20. Which of these children would be correct? Which one of them has measured the area properly? It's not the first girl, Whitney. Her squares are all over the place. And it's not this boy either, because he's used different sizes of squares to measure it, and that's not fair, that's not equal. But this last girl, she's used squares of the same size to measure her area. And so it's her area that would be correct. The area is 20 squares. There we are. Okay, now we're going to do some comparison of area using our greater than, less than and equals signs. So here's our first set of shapes. Which one is bigger? Well, we can see it's the triangle on the right, so I'm going to use my less than sign. This triangle is less than this triangle. Now I've got some circles, but this one is missing a chunk out of the middle. So therefore, this circle is greater than this circle. And now I have two shapes. There's four squares in this shape, and there's four squares in this shape. They're both the same, which means I have to use my equals sign. I could draw a shape with smaller area by using less squares, and to make a shape that has greater area, I could just use more squares. It's your turn now to have a go at some of the area questions on Teams. Remember, if you get stuck, you can come back and rewatch this video to hear the explanation. And if you're still feeling stuck, ask for some help on the Ask the Teachers channel. You were really good at this last week. Please keep it up. Fantastic. We'll see you soon. Goodbye.